Now to your community focus, tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo, so today we are taking a moment to learn more about the celebration of Mexican heritage. Joining us now, live via Zoom, Brown University professor Paja Foudry. Uh, she is an expert in anthropology and an expert in all things Mexico. Professor, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. So, Professor, can we just start with the basics here? What is the history of Cinco de Mayo and what are the appropriate ways for us to celebrate it? Sure, thanks for the question. Um, so officially, the history uh, um, Cinco de Mayo is to celebrate or commemorate the Battle of Puebla, which was um, a, a battle that happened in, in 1862, May 5th, 1862, in which 4,000 Mexican troops um, had a surprise victory over about 8,000 French troops. Um, uh, and it, it was a surprise victory. They weren't expected to win, but, uh, but they did. Um, and although it wasn't decisive, it was a really important symbolic victory for Mexico. Um, uh, after that, the French actually wound up um, uh, having possession of Mexico for about about five years, um, and that's one of the reasons why it's um, in some ways much more important in the United States than it is in Mexico. It's not a major national holiday in Mexico; it's a minor national holiday, but it's one that's, that's got a very important history attached to it. And Professor, to that point you were just mentioning, considering your studies of Mexico, is there another day of the year we should know about that Mexicans do celebrate perhaps more than Cinco de Mayo? Sure. So um, the, one of the biggest histories and uh, one of the biggest holidays in Mexico is September 16th, which is the, the, the Independence Day. Sometimes people mistakenly think of Cinco de Mayo as Independence Day um, in Mexico, um, but it's actually on the 16th of September. So that's a very, very big national holiday. And Professor, um, we were, sorry to interrupt you, but we were seeing some, some B-roll there of folks having tacos and, you know, drinking margaritas. Is that sort of an adequate way uh, of celebrating Cinco de Mayo, or is that more of an American twist on what this holiday is? So that is a, a particular American twist. In particular, I could, I could talk more about history if there's time, but in particular, one of the really important things that happened in the holiday that made it so well-known is that in the 80s, because there was this increasing... Um, Mexican, American, Mexican American population in the United States, beer companies in particular became really interested in sort of tapping into that market. Um, so they began really heavily marketing it, um, which is one of the reasons why, and ever since it's been sort of heavily associated with, um, you know, with drinking and with beer and with wine to a lesser extent. Um, so that's part of the history of the holiday, but I would say that's not one of the best ways to celebrate it. I mean, one of the most respectful ways is to do exactly what you're doing is ask me about history, learn a little bit more about the history. Um, in general, I would say a really important thing to do is to remember that cultures are not um, are not costumes, right? So sort of resist stereotypes. It may be fun to sort of put on a big sombrero and wear a big mustache, but um, but it's really much better to 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 have respect for Mexican culture and learn a bit about Mexican culture if you don't know much about it. Um, so, for example, instead of going to Taco Bell, if you could sort of find a local Mexican restaurant. Um, and eat there. Try a new Mexican dish you've never tried before. Mole, if you've never had it, which is a really great dish that not as many Americans know about as tacos. Um, uh, patronize other Mexican Mexican businesses. Uh, Mexican Mexico has famous, wonderful arts and crafts. Um, um, museums often have exhibits on Mexican culture. Um, also, Mexico, Mexico has a fantastic film industry. So if you have a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu, um, seek out a Mexican film. There are great documentaries, features, short songs. Um, the Mexican film industry has so much to offer. Um, so all of those things, I would say, are, are better ways to, to celebrate Cinco de Mayo rather than thinking of it as a sort of license to, uh, to drink a lot of tequila. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, talking more broadly about the relationship between the U.S. and Mexico, how has the border wall and political conversations around immigration impacted America's view of Mexican migrants? And on the other side of the coin, how do Mexicans view Americans? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a time of particular strain between U.S.-Mexico relations, and I think that's one of the sort of promises of a, of a holiday like this one is that uh, it gives us a chance to sort of look at the sort of broader history of, of influence between the two countries, which has been great and very productive in many ways. I mean, I think for, for many ways, for many people, um, some of the contests around the border wall and immigration have made Mexicans feel very um, distrustful of the government, very skeptical of the U.S. government. Um, worried about the future of our two countries um uh and i and obviously the opposite is also true i mean sort of the, the, the daily discussion of, of of how many mexican migrants but also increasingly um central american migrants migrants from elsewhere are crossing from mexico um and so the horrible conditions in which they've been treated 
um, has also um, been the source of great distress for, for Mexican, Mexicans and Americans alike, as well as Mexican Americans, obviously. Brown University Professor Paja Foudry, thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.